says the Chafetz Chaim. He says that the, the, how important it is to be patient and to hear both sides before you jump to conclusions. He, he says a story of how somebody believed Rechilut. Rechilut, we said, was someone repeated to A what C said, right? B repeated to A, Shlomo repeated to David, oh, you heard what Ruven said about you? And right away, Ruven, uh, right away, uh, David believed what Shlomo said and he got all upset at Ruven. So therefore he says, he says there was a goy who ordered barrels of wine from a Jew. And after agreeing a price, the Goy said, I'll come the next day to pick up my order. That night, the Goy was uh, talking with another Jew. And he said, oh, listen, what are you doing around here? Oh, I went to pick up wine, buy wine from so-and-so. Zachen, why are you buy from him? Buy from me. I can get you a better price. Leave him alone. Forget him. He said, I already made a deal with him. Forget him. Don't, 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 don't drop him. Go ignore him and just pick up from me. So ended up being that he went back to the first guy, the first Jew, and he canceled the order. The merchant said, what is this? What are you doing canceling the order? You, you got to pay. That's it. We, uh, no returns. No, you can't cancel. See, he says, this, see, the guy lied. And he said, listen, I didn't go to the other guy. The other Jew approached me. And he came to, and he came to me. And uh, asked, well, really, the guy, what did he do? He shopped around. The guy went around asking. And then he canceled it. But the Jew, he estimated that the Jew, it sounded like the Jew came to me. And he's the one who, you know, started the conversation. And he tried to sell to me. It's uh, it's not my fault. And, and what did the guy, what did the guy say? The Jew told me, why are you buying from that merchant? His wine is no good anyways. And he made up all these lies. Ended up being, now, now the first merchant heard all this. And he got so mad at this other Jew. What is he stealing my business? Talking about my, my, my merchandise as if it's bad. And he made a whole feud. And he went and he went to war against this guy. He wanted to destroy this guy. All because this guy made up a whole story and he didn't hear both sides. What was this Jew supposed to do? He said, wow, this is really, I don't know if this really happened or not. You know what, before I jump to conclusions, let me call him up. So listen, I had this guy come to me, buy him from me. He said, this is story, it's true. Did you say such a thing? Yeah, I could, it was hard for me to believe that you would say such a thing. That's the right way to, to do, not to just come to him. Oh yeah, this is how you do business. You, you know, you talk, you talk to Goyim and take my customers. Oh, oh, oh. You know, and jump and jump on him like that. And you already judge him in your heart. Person has to be careful not to fall into this. And this is the main reason why people lose shalom is they hear one side of the story and they don't know how to wait to hear both sides of the story. And it's very, very difficult, but a person has to train himself and train even with little kids. So and so said, so and so hit me. Right away, why do you come and yell at so and so? Oh, why you hit him? First of all, maybe he hit him. And he's saying that he hit me. You don't know how many times this happens. So a person in general, whenever it comes to even in his own family. He has to hear both sides of the story before he judges. Because even in a court case, you hear one side, you already judge? No, you have to have. Okay, you say, that's what you said. No problem. I heard you. Now you speak. Now what do you say? And then we come to a conclusion. Person has to know how to judge properly and not to just believe one side. The Chafetz Chaim many times said, the guy who's saying the Rechilut, he's saying something asur from the Torah. He's doing a sin right now, telling you what he said. And what? You believe him? He's doing an Avera, and you believe in what he's doing. In the middle of Avera, you should believe what he's doing. He's uh, acting like a Rasha, and you're not going to believe Rasha. person who says, you know, who does a sin all the time, he doesn't care, it's a sur, he's Pasul Eidut. He's not believed as a testif to testify. He's not a valid witness. So how can you believe this guy is a witness? He's, he's doing something I swear in front of you. It's like he eat, breaks Shabbat, he eats Knan Kasher, and he wants to testify in uh, Chupa, and he did the Kiddushim. He's, he's not valid. He's not a valid witness. So how can you believe what he says? Obviously, obviously, you have to hear both sides before you judge, before you jump to conclusions. And he also says that... Uh, then another thing that we have to work on and we have to pay attention to is that the uh, Parshat Metzorah is coming up soon. We have Tazriya Metzorah. And he says in Parshat Metzorah, usually when a person does a sin, he just gives Chokorban Chatat. He gives one lamb. And that's it. That's a sacrifice for a sin offering. But by the Metzorah, he has to give the also two birds, wood from a cedar tree, a red thread, and the the hyssop bush, a bunch of other things. A lot, a lot of parts, a lot of tools for it to do is Kapara. And the question is why? You let him give Chatat. Let him get, get forgiven. So the altar from Kelm says that we have to realize that the mashal is like a doctor in the operation. When a person has a simple ailment, simple problem, you just need one or two tools. When the situation, the problem is more complicated, more severe, you're going to need a whole set of tools. And so this guy, he doesn't need just hatat. He needs this tool, that tool, this tool, that tool. When a person is getting into the habit of speaking the Shara and he does it and he gets witnesses saw and he has to do Teshuvah and give a Korban Hatat, you should know that it's so complicated and it's very deep and very, very uh, a harsh problem for a person in the Shema to remove the sin of the Shara, it's not going to be enough of Korban Hatat. You're going to need all these steps to get Kapara, and all these things are supposed to stem from what? A person's problem and humility, 
in a person's problem of uh, uh, thinking that he can speak about somebody else, not caring about another person's feelings. And this is a very complicated and hard thing to take out and to remove. And that's why it needs so many tools. Therefore, we have to not let ourselves fall in there. And once we fall in there, we have to make a lot of, a lot of efforts to get out of there. And finally, we'll end with the, the last message in the whole book. He says that the coming of Mashiach is dependent on us. The Zohar says that it, we can build and we can bring the Mashiach very, very fast. All if we observe the Midah of Shalom. Can you imagine, the Chafetz Chaim says, can you imagine that a person says, you want to build a Beit HaMikdash? Or imagine right now, we make a campaign, charity campaign for building the Beit HaMikdash. We need whatever it is. I don't know, a billion dollars. We're going to go and build the most beautiful building. You're going to come pay? Of course. Who's not going to come pay? I'm going to give whatever I can give. Thousand dollars, I'm in. You, we go to all the Jews in the entire world. Thousand dollars, I'm in, I'm in. They would go in without a heartbeat. The, we, we give this money, we collect, the second we collect this money, the, the Beit HaMikdash is going to be here, we're going to bring the Mashiach. People will donate, of course people will donate, people will jump to donate. So Rabbi, the problem is, we don't have this charity campaign. There, it's not running, so how do we do it? The Chafetz Chaim says there is a charity campaign right now. There is a way to make it happen right now. How? Where do I, who do I pay? It's not about money. What do you have to give? You have to give the, the, the zikhut of making shalom. Removing from yourself the shonara and holding up the midah of shalom. That's the buying. That's the donation Hashem's looking for. And we're looking not for money. The brick, you, you, you build another brick by saying, I don't speak the shonara. By saying, whatever shalom makes, whatever shalom needs, I'm there for shalom. I'm going to make shalom. Love peace, chase peace. And that's the charity campaign that we should be making now. And when we do this, right away the bit of midash will be right. Amen, amen, amen.